Hey guys, so today I'm going to be overclocking an i3-9350KF. You may ask, what the hell is an i3-9350KF? Well, it's Intel's last K-series i3 processor, so that means you can overclock it. Now, what's overclocking? Overclocking is the action of increasing a component's clock rate, running it at a higher speed than it was designed to run. Still confused? I am Confucian! To put it simply, you're telling your CPU to use a little more power to give you about 10% better performance. It's like giving your processor a little bit of Red Bull to give it a little boost. It's not like we're giving it steroids or coke. So far, I've been able to get it at 5.2 gigahertz. Anything after that, it just blue screens on me. So essentially, I'm going to be pushing this processor to its limits and I'm going to use a stock i7-9700K as a reference to see how close I can get this i3 to an i7. It's going to be pretty sicko mode. So before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And every video I post will be more sicko mode than the last. All right, let's get to it. Let's talk about the specs of this processor. This processor came out in 2019. Its downfall is gonna be that it's only four cores, four threads, so there's no hyper-threading. I was able to get it for $100 in 2023. Now, if you compare it to the 9700K, the i7 has double the cores. It's interesting though, this i7 does not have hyper-threading. Brand new, it's $262. At least that was the cheapest I could find it. That's honestly not a good price, but it is what it is. Now, going back to the i3, so when it came out in 2019, it was a pretty solid processor if all you needed to do was gaming. Back then, four cores was kind of just enough to get by for gaming. This processor is not for everyone. It's only for specific people. And what I mean by that is in 2023, you can get better processors. I paid about $100 for this. It's pretty cheap. The thing is a Ryzen 5 5500 is around $100 as well and gives you way better performance, has more cores. It's a better all around CPU. Let's say you're like me. You're just a freak. Like me. And you just had a Z390 motherboard just kind of bopping around, not knowing which way's up. Bopping around, doesn't know which way's up. You've upgraded your system, so it's just kind of sitting there and you want to do something with it, maybe build a secondary PC that can do some light gaming. This may be the processor for you. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. So if you're wanting to either learn how to overclock or you're just wanting a secondary gaming PC and you need it to be compatible with an older motherboard like the Z390 motherboard, even the Z290s work, this is a fun little processor. Like I said, with the 5.2 gigahertz overclock, we're going to see how close I can get it to the i7-9700K when it comes to gaming and only gaming because it's only four cores. Heavy CPU workloads is kind of out of the question. And the reason why I'm using that i7 is because it's the same generation. Obviously, if I compare it to a 13th gen i7, which is the newest i7 right now, there's no contest. And now let's talk about the build that I have it in. Obviously, I'm using the i3-9350KF. I'm cooling with an NZXT Kraken Z73 water cooler. I'm using the Gigabyte Z390 AORS Pro motherboard, 16 gigs of DDR4 G-Skill Royal RAM, and it's paired with an RTX 4060 Ti, which is decent. I wouldn't say it's a must-have. Tweaktown is tripping. And it's all inside of the NZXT H9 Elite case. But anyways, so the first test I decided to run was the Cinebench test. During the multi-core test, obviously the 9700K beats out the i3 with double the amount of cores. I'm mainly focused on the single core performance because that's what's most important in gaming. And while overclocked, I was happy to see the i3 did beat out the 9700K stock. But what was most surprising to me was the jump in power usage. It's using the same amount of power as the i7 when overclocked. And it's getting warm enough to make your nuts hang low, if you know what I mean. So after the Cinebench test, I decided to do some 3D Mark gaming benchmarks. First test I ran was a Fire Strike Extreme test. The 9700K had about an 8% improvement over the i3, which is expected with double the amount of cores. When it's not overclocked, the i7 beat it by about 11%. And then after that, I ran Time Spy. During Time Spy, the 9700K beat the i3 by a much bigger margin of 15% while overclocked. While stock, the 9700K beat the i3 by about 17%. So at least we know the overclock is helping by a little bit. 
I decided to run some in-game benchmarks. First game I ran was the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. This is the game I thought I would see the biggest difference in FPS between the overclocked i3 and the 9700K, just because Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a much more CPU dependent game, which clearly showed when there was a lot of detail. I did run everything on ultra settings at 1440p, and the i3 did hold its own. It was only about a four FPS difference. The next game I ran was the Cyberpunk benchmark. I ran this test at medium to high settings with ray tracing on. With Cyberpunk being more of a GPU dependent test, I was expecting to see similar scores, hopefully. And the i3 actually beat it out by about one frame per second better, which is pretty sicko mode if you ask me. And then after that, I did the Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark. I ran this test at 1440p at decently high settings, not ultra though. With this being an open world game, I expect the 9700K to beat it out because these games perform better when your CPU has more cores. But once again, the i3 was holding its own with the i7. There weren't any crazy drops in FPS, even with explosions. It kind of looks like that horse just gave up on life. The explosion didn't really kill it. It's interesting to note that the benchmark isn't always identical. During one of the tests, my hat fell off, and on the other test, my hat stayed on. So it's just interesting. I hope having the hat on doesn't F up my FPS. Just kidding, it shouldn't. Pretty solid FPS from the i3. Once again, it was only four FPS behind the i7. So you may not be able to see the difference to the naked eye. And the final game I ran was GTA 5. They were actually neck and neck when it came to FPS. Both were an enjoyable experience at ultra settings at 1440p. Whichever processor you went with, it was still a nice day at the beach. There was no clear winner between the processors. These processors should handle this game pretty easily because this game is so old that if you had a kid when this game came out, the kid would be 10 years old. But it's still a super fun game and they're constantly improving it. So after running all these tests, after playing these games, what does this all mean? I just wanted to see how close I can get this i3 processor to an i7 of the same generation by overclocking it. Would say I got pretty dang close. Now you could say, well, why didn't you buy an i7 to begin with? Cause you could overclock that one and get even better performance. Like I said, this processor would be for the person who just wants a secondary build, doesn't want to spend an arm and a leg to build this secondary build. And they already have a Z390 or Z290 motherboard that they're just wanting to use. I would say if it's strictly a gaming PC that you're building, this is not a bad way to go. It's, I was able to get it for $100 brand new, maybe buy the Intel Arc A750. I was able to get that for $199. It would pair super nice with this. It would be a perfect 1080p machine. It's a pretty solid processor. And if you're wanting to get into overclocking and you're wanting to mess around with stuff like that. Woohoo! You like the freaky stuff. This is kind of fun. Overall, I was able to get it pretty close to the i7 9700K. It's a perfect processor for 1080p gaming, even some 1440p gaming. Probably should impair it with more than a 4060Ti, unless you want to see a severe bottleneck. But overall, it held its own against an i7. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. And please like and subscribe if you like this content. Each video I put out, I strive to make more sicko mode than the last. And like always, have a sicko mode day.